Hi, welcome to Social Research Insights. My name is Kamaksha Musnuru. I am Principal Consultant at Social Research Insights. Social Research Insights is not a business organization. It's just a freelance training outfit. We're just a couple of individuals who are working on the freelance style. Uh, we have a lot of content online. Uh, all the content is free. However, we have a, a small request uh, that uh, uh, please consider calling us for some staff development or faculty development programs for training. Uh, this is one of my um, video demonstrations which belongs to a series of presentations that related to a particular concept called Python for data analytics. In my previous videos I've explained Python for some uh, few data analysis techniques like descriptive statistics and I also went to ahead and explained how to test the univariate normality for a given uh, input variable. In this video I'm going to show you how to uh, perform the bivariate correlation. Now that we don't have any code uh, in the community to test or to, f to ca ca calculate the bivariate correlation or to but all the packages and the procedures that we have may not be compatible for our work. Uh, that is written for some some definite purposes uh, which may not similar to the purpose that we are intended to do. So I'm going to show you how to develop a procedure, not the procedure, how to develop a source code or maybe how to write the Python code to compare the Carl Pearson correlation coefficient. This is uh, one of the generic correlation method used by the data analyst. Uh, I'm going to show you how to write the code and also perform. First let me talk about the scenario or the context. We're going to test this Carl Pearson correlation coefficient on uh, some medical data. I have data in my system. This is actually some medical data which is retrieved from the healthcare information systems in some hospital. I have two data variables. I just extracted only two data variables from gastro entities department. Uh, the data mm, exhibits two data vectors. The first one is the stress, which is measured uh, by using Likert, you know, measurement scale that which range from one to five. One stands for um, not strong, and the five stands for strong. I mean, the five for stress means that the stress levels in the given patient is very strong, and one for stress is that the stress levels in a given patient is not strong and the gastro entities or gastritis is a health condition where the patients suffer uh, stomach pain due to some um, instantaneous or chronic burst um, I mean bouts of uh, illness in the stomach uh, G zero stands for no one stand for yes which means zero indicates uh, did not have gas gastritis but patient complains that he suspects or the medical practitioner suspects the gastritis and one stands for yes which means the patient diagnosed confirmed that he has gastritis this is the sample data we just have 30 uh, rows of data which means 30 patients the data related to 30 patients in there are two types of uh, gastritis that is the acute gastritis and the chronic gastritis um, there are two types of diagnosis one based on the antacids and the other one based on the bacterial infections that is the patients are asked to consume the medicine for every 30 minutes or maybe very short period 30 minutes before intake of the food or 10 to 60 minutes before intake of the food or sometimes the patients also asked to consume the medicine for every 24 hours routinely for a period of 14 15 16 something like that uh, anyway we are not into the clinical part of the analysis this is just a non-clinical data analysis related to healthcare analytics okay uh, we are going to uh, the question given by the hospital or the practitioner is that uh, is there any relationship between the stress condition of the patient and gastritis and the occurrence of the gastritis something like that now the responsibility of the data analyst is to find a statistical technique uh, to, 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 to estimate and also provide evidence in support of the claim uh, that there exists some effect in the sample data that effect which is measured as relationship 
is statistically significant so so the uh, I'll go in detail about the hypothesis later but uh, this is actually the context for the situation given this context then the responsibility of the data scientist not the analyst because we are going to do this analysis by using Python so Python is for the data scientist not for the analyst okay I'm going to show you how to develop the code using a Python this is my IDLE I'm using Ubuntu 16.04 operating system uh, it's a beautiful operating system for data scientists if you want to be a developer then you need start using Linux uh, Linux is really I mean a wonderful um, uh, I mean operating system for any machine uh, now we are going to figure out this particular question that whether the relationship between the stress and uh, and the gastritis occurrence of the gastritis in these 30 patients is statistically significant or not so given the context or scenario uh, usually in statistics uh, we need to figure out this uh, uh, and especially if you are interested in significant test we need to have a hypothesis uh, in statistics the hypothesis usually the the study hypothesis which is uh, also known as alternative hypothesis is that there exists some relationship uh, which means the the row in population is not equal to zero so which means the relationship I is not equal to zero which w we strictly mean that instead of zero we can suspect some value and that value range from 0 to 1 oh, sorry minus 1 to 1 that is actually the theory of correlation uh, you need to take some you know introductory course if you want to know what exactly is correlation. I'm going to tell you what it is so obviously the null hypothesis is going to be the relationship in the population is actually 0 though you find some sort of how are we going to figure out this uh, hypothesis that is the question so what we do we'll try to the I mean the entire the procedure is going to be like this uh, we'll try to uh, let me okay uh, okay no problem so we'll we, we'll try to compute the Carl Pearson correlation coefficient I just call it as cor cor and I write some source code for that uh, I think you can find the formula pretty well anywhere online it is simply covariance of um, x comma y uh, divided by the standard deviation of x and standard deviation of y but not exactly but you know to sh sh to simply to say this is the formula for the uh, correlation uh, you can just why should I confuse it you can just call Pearson correlation coefficient formula or Wikipedia you can go uh, this is the formula for the call Pearson here you have the short form of the covariance of x comma y x is a vector of numeric data y is a vector of the numeric data and in denominator we have the product of the standard deviations and in um, layman language they call Fe Pearson sample data yeah, sample statistic is equal to the product of the deviations for x and y some of the product of the deviations for x and y divided by product of the uh, sums of the square deviations this is how we need to understand the so what we do we try to write the code for numerator and denominator separately and then we come back divide the numerator with the denominator find the ratio as in the form of the call Pearson coefficient r then finally we need to know some extra information and that information is going to be like this I call it as significance test we need to confirm because we should help the practitioner healthcare practitioner or consultant to take some inference whether the assumption uh, is true or false uh, for that we need some statistical test we are going to follow the methodology of the correlation theory uh, we need to calculate uh, I mean if we want to test the hypothesis we need to have a theoretical we need to find a statistic uh, which belongs to uh, well established a theoretical probability distribution we have t, t distribution 
the transformation of the R to T goes like this T is equal to R multiplied square root of n minus 2 by 1 minus R square which means we are transforming that R which we compu computed by using a mathematical expression into the nearby value of the T and now once we have the t statistic with us then it is possible for us to go for the p value based on the that probability value it is possible for us to conclude that whether we are agreeing the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis so this is the entire procedure now what we need to do okay we need to develop the source code this is actually uh, one of the I'm developing a package in Python for statistical analysis uh, I'm using the same file I explained how to develop the package or module using Python in my previous video you can just go I'm going to develop the method for correlation I call it as correlate okay just like here as I define the methods we need to write a method for the correlation okay I'm going to write it now and later I will try to explain what is there inside the source code and how to implement that in our editor sorry Python editor this is the method so I defined a method called correlate which accepts two data vectors and this is the help string this uh, the doc string and you don't worry about this we need two packages I requested Python to let me use numpy which is the numerical uh, analysis I mean the package which is used for the numerical analysis as with an alias name NP and I also requested Python to to make me uh, to let me use the package scipy I mean the module stats from the package scipy we need these two packages and the second package we only need the module stats and this module is helpful to find the T value and also P value not the T value but P value and now this is the numerator so numerator of the call Pearson correlation coefficient let's go back and this is the numerator of the I use the list comprehension method list comprehension which is a very wonderful technique available from the Python to combine the I mean numerical calculations along with the loops it is just combination of a loop and uh, a function I also used lambda, lambda function you can just go online and see what is lambda and how to use the list comprehensions or you can go through my previous videos where I explained everything in detail uh, this is the denominator which is actually the squared uh, uh, let me tell you in numerator we have x i minus x bar this is the that is called the deviation for all values of x and uh, another term in the numerator is the differences deviations of y which means y i minus y bar so this is these are these are the two deviations for two different vectors and the product see here x into y from numerator one this one and numerator two this two this one so we are we are we are we are making the product of the values of these two vectors and finally sum them up that is the meaning of the sum of the product of the deviations for vectors x comma y so that is the numerator in precise and now coming to the denominator we have the sum of the square deviations rise to 0.5 which means the square root so sum of the deviations I mean square deviations rise to 0.5 which means square s s square root now we have denominator which is the product of these two uh, uh, I mean the objects denom1 and denom2 and finally we find the call Pearson correlation or by dividing the numerator numerator with uh, denominator I, I simply call it as core which means it's just a user object you can name anything you can use your own names to say the and finally I want the t value as I said we are going to use this transformation to find the t value or multiplied square root of n minus 2 by 1 minus r let's go back r this is core is actually r uh, multiplied by n minus 2 divided by 1 minus r square and rise to 0.5 which means square root and finally we multiply with r that is the t value and for p value we have the stats module from the package scipy 
we are going to use cyp I'm going to use a statement uh, scipy stats something like that scipy stats tsf this is the survival sf stand for the survival function which return the p-value for a given t-value usually in most of the time sometimes the t-value can be a negative value but uh, there are no negative values in the t distribution we need to use uh, a particular function called abs from package numpy that is why I said we need numpy from uh, numpy is available with an alias name np np abs which means make t value absolute for degrees of freedom and sorry this is 2 not 1 uh, for, for degrees of freedom n minus 2 and finally we get the p value and, fi uh, and we try to return all these objects these three objects as in the form of a dictionary so that it is easy for me to call each value by name uh, I say all these values as in the form of a dictionary uh, in a, a particular user object which I define myself you can define your own name as a result res stands for res and finally return res so let's see how this function is going to help us control say go to our run module now we got our now let us have some test data x is equal to I just take 1 to 10 and y I take this is only testing okay soon after we finish our source code in software development we try to test the source code with the help of some test data and later we'll go and do full fledged uh, I take the same can somebody guess what is going to be the Carl Pearson coefficient it is 1 why because both variables have same similar data so suddenly the Carl Pearson coefficient should be 1 so correlate yes x comma y that should be see here core 1 0.999999999 something like that and apart from that we also have the t value here and we also have the p value this value is very very important for us now I have written the function such a way that we can even uh, no since our object is a dictionary it is possible for us to use inquire for a particular value t val S then I'll get only t value then p val I get only p value and then uh, what else we have core correlation perhaps this is the f one so this way we can just now let us go back to our data I think I sh I've shown you this is the healthcare or the data which related to gastritis taken from some healthcare information systems now I need a particular package called pandas to read this we don't even need the package we can straight away go on import pandas as pd now mydf pd read csv okay sorry read csv yeah we have to save the the path I think my CSV file name is stress CSV and read it so my DF let us see the head of header of the head not header head of the first of six yeah we have the data now my DF so this way we can see the stress uh, give me the first of six records of the of the stress I don't know just uh, yeah it is possible so give me the first of six records of the uh, gastritis it is possible so now we can go ahead and perform the same correl correlate uh, my df uh, stress my f gastritis that's uh, beautiful so we got a p value of point, um, point, point 0.30 which means it is greater than 0 0.05 at 5% 5 significance level uh, we are not actually rejecting the null hypothesis we are accepting the null hypothesis though we have some certain effect here which is negative relationship between the stress and gastritis is actually the negative but poor poor we have some certain effect here some association which is negative we don't have any association 
and it is not statistically significant which means this negative association or relationship whatever we are perceiving from the sample data is not statistically significant but actual relationship can be zero so that is going to be let us go back to the so we are not rejecting the we fit rejecting the hypothesis so though we have some certain effect in the sample data uh, i should say no, it's not just an effect um, the actual relationship in the population is zero so whatever the effect that we are perceiving from this particular sample is just as a matter of sam sampling error of the sample data okay this way this is actually the procedure to compute the uh, Carl Pearson uh, I mean uh, Carl Pearson correlation coefficient to with the rest of the information like t statistic and p value so if you use the packages just like numpy in numpy you have a particular function called mm, core I don't know I should say import numpy as np np core let's see yeah core core coefficient so I can go core coefficient and let's see what's going to happen my df stress but the problem I'll tell you the problem what is the problem with these packages my df mm, gas treatise the problem is we only get the Carl Pearson correlation coefficient just like I think our code is far better compared to the the code it is all depends on the the formats that we use in the code same value isn't it you get the same value but whereas here you don't have the respective information like what is the t value and what is the p value I think you have a particular function like Pearson or in stats mm, I don't know whether you have the stats uh, scipy stats st uh, yeah stats uh, Pearson yeah Pearson or so here you get the t value but you don't get the p value but you don't get the t value this is the problem my df stress my df gas this sorry cypa is not defined In import scipy stats now let's go back yeah so we get the same value so both through numpy scipy and also with our own source code we get the same value but whereas here the p-value is 0.61 here the p-value is 0 0.30 either way both of them can be the same meaning, but we can figure out it later you get the only p-value and the t-value but you don't get the t -value in scipy so that way it is not possible for us to I think here I need to return the 1 minus p value here 1 minus p value yes control save control v and now run model. so now I think uh, we'll get correlate oh my god my df is not there yeah no problem doesn't matter we we'll go for the same Mm. Now we'll get the same p value. Oh no, let's go and use our correlate. Yeah. You see now 69. <laughs> so here 61. Okay. Anyway, that's not that's a very close value, it doesn't matter. So we only get the both these packages helps us to get the Carl Pearson correlation coefficient and also p value, but we miss the t value. If we develop our uh, that is the advantage of writing our own methods to uh, do the data analysis on the sample data instead of using the packages. Okay, I hope you understand what is the Carl Pearson correlation correlation coefficient and also develop a function using python and perform the analysis on the sample data through my video if you like my video please press like and stay tuned for the new content thanks for watching